So now that we've had an overview of the item and bombs workspace, let's go in and examine item and bill of material creation. Let's start by going in, creating a new sub bomb. Within the sub bomb, we'll just call this sub assembly. Under the classification, we'll call this a bill of material. S bomb. say it's a 600 series. This is going to give us our prefix number. I'll come down and click on save. So the new subassembly was created. You can see up here the life cycle is unreleased and the revision is unreleased as this is a brand new part. It has yet to go through a change uh, and find its way into a release date. Let's take a look at a few things. We see that the part number has the 600 and then it's uh, this is the first uh, sub bomb of this series. So it's 600 with a one at the end. Coming down here we can see the classification, costing, the ERP data. All of this is empty as this is a brand new bill of material and it's just waiting for some subcomponents. So let's go and create those. To build a bill of materials there's a couple of different approaches. We're going to take the top-down approach in this example. So we'll go to the bill of materials tab and click on add. And Within the bill of materials you can sort through and scroll or if you know the starting prefix of some of the components you can type it in and the list will sort itself. So I'll grab one of those and just one more here. We'll take each of these and we'll move to the next and it'll ask well how many what's the quantity of each and we'll go with say one of each and save. And now we have the beginning of our bill of material. But where do these parts come from? So certainly you can build a top-down that would presuppose that all of these components already exist. Well, how do we get these individual components into PLM? And there's a variety of different ways. Let's take a look at the very first way by creating a new component. Building a new component on the fly can be done a couple of different ways. First, if you have a description in mind, you can type in the description or you can leave this for later. Note that the number field will automatically be created and generated by the classification that you use. In our example, I'm going to choose a passive component that is a capacitor and single. And note that this, this pulls directly from the class description and class number. Now for this next part, we're going to go down to the approved manufacturer's parts list. If you know the manufacturer part number and the manufacturer, you can enter it here. In my example, I'm choosing something directly out of the Octopart catalog. And upon save, this will go out to Octopart and bring back the min, max, price, availability, a link, and the data sheet. Once we have this information in here, we can come in and either save. Save and new would actually save this component and return us to creating a new component. Or save and clone would be to save and keep some of the same values, uh, perhaps change a manufacturer part number or the manufacturer and get us right back into creating components one after another. In this case, I'll just click on Save. With the new component added and saved, we can see that it went out and it updated the rest of the information within the item record. And now we can actually go in and add it to the bill of materials that we built earlier. Now, in order to add this component to a larger bill of materials, for instance, the one that we created before, we could go and open up that bill of material, click on the bill of material tab, and click on add, and add this component in. But PLM 360 gives you the flexibility to work in a top-down or bottom-up environment. Up at the top, there's a toolbar here called Create Relationships, and I'm going to go and add this to a bill of materials. So in order to choose a bill of material or an assembly to place this component, I can either scroll through the list, or I can type in the assembly name that I created earlier. And in doing so, it's going to ask me for the quantity. So I'll say 2, and we'll save this down. And I can see that this item was actually created and added to the where used, added to this assembly. And through PLM 360, I can click on that, and it'll take me directly to and now I can see my bill of materials is starting to form nicely.